I studied physics, and my job was to be a geophysicist in an Antarctic base. But the moment I arrived, I found that there is a penguin colony that lives very close by. When I saw these huddling penguins, I was intrigued. I couldn't imagine how they organize themselves so that they can stay like this for hours and hours and hours. That was my driving question. So the emperor penguin has a pretty special breeding cycle. It's the only vertebrate that breeds during an Arctic winter. After laying the egg, the females go foraging and the males stay behind for about 110, 115 days. Now you must imagine they stand there continuously without being able to eat anything. There's nothing around, it's just ice. Temperatures go down to minus 60, minus 70 degrees. The amazing thing is that in the end, nature finds a way to utilize every single space in this world. Before we started our observations, we knew that these penguins come together and stand in these very, very tight groups. It was believed that the animals somehow spiral in the center and then spiral back out of the center. So each of them gets some share of the heat. But what makes the, the group stay stable over time uh, was simply unknown. And I thought, okay, let's take some pictures and see if there is actually some science involved. And it turned out that what we found was way more interesting what, than what we would have expected. <coughs> what we need is an observatory that is capable to collect data. SPOT is nothing but a shipping container, which we equipped with a lot of electronics. We have currently nine cameras on top of it. My group is split across different continents. So we have a group in Germany and here the group in the US working on this. And we need to be able to remote control everything from here in the lab. Well, this is the master view of our observatory. That's what we see when we come in, uh, in the office in the morning to work on it. And it allows us to see all the different camera pictures and to remote control the system. That's the full view. We can monitor about 25 square kilometers. We can point this camera to the exact location where the penguins are and record high-resolution footage of the animals. Time-lapse imaging is the ideal technology. You can see these very slow dynamics that our brain is not capable to integrate if you watch it in real time. You see the overview pictures and we can track the motion of the whole colony over weeks. You can see the colony is stable here, but slowly, very slowly moving over. So in, in this time lapse, you can see the different penguins have little marks on their heads because that's how the algorithm finds the penguins and tracks them over time. If one of these animals starts to move a little bit, it bumps a little bit into the other penguins, basically where feathers become compressed and they sense that and make a same move in the same direction and because they do this all together, they exhibit this traveling wave. So you, you see a step wave traveling throughout the whole group. The group rearranges about every 30 seconds by a tiny little bit. But by doing so, they optimize their packing, which ensures as little heat loss as possible. In this video here, we see how the penguins move over the course of a day. And by the end of the day, when the sun goes away, it becomes colder again, um, the animals come back together into these tight groups. And we calculate a transition temperature, the temperature where it's more probable for the animals to go from that loose, non-huddling state into a huddling state. Imagine they had a very good year in foraging, then they are a little bit fatter, so they will start to huddle later because they don't feel cold that soon. If, of course, it was a bad year and they didn't have a proper food supply, they might start to huddle earlier. And we can capture this transition temperature. We think that you can use the temperature as uh, an indicator for how is the colony doing? What are the energy reserves they have? Oh. <laughs> 
we don't know if penguins behave altruistic or purely egoistic. Um, it is very difficult to prove. And my personal belief is that it is possible that every individual animal there behaves purely egoistic, so doing what's best for them, but what's best for them in the end still benefits the whole group. If we added a high resolution thermal imaging camera, so now everything we see in visual imaging, we also see in thermal imaging. So we will now be able to see the penguins day and night, and it will be able to measure the temperature gradient within the huddling groups. Hi, Alex. I just checked on the camera and we can see that the boat is still there. When the research vessel comes to resupply the base, they also get the drive our data is on and bring them back. So we have to wait at least one year to get the raw data. Did you make sure that our data is safe on the boat? I'm awaiting it. When the hard drives show up at our office, it's the most exciting day of the year. Now my, my, the, the grand scientific question is, I want to be able to predict behavior. So gathering this long-term ecological data allows us to better predict what's their future going to be. How are they going to be able to cope with changing of the sea ice, with changing temperature? The species is expected to be extinct or highly diminished in numbers by the end of the century. It is very important that we focus on this now. So the changes are already dramatic. We are quite late in the clock to study it, but I think we still can do it.